Welcome to part three of this $100 challenge where I'm trying to make over my daughter's room and only spend $100. In this video, we're going to go through the final reveal. My name is Sarah and I like to take things that are ugly and beat up or pulled out of the trash and make them beautiful again. Welcome to my channel. My daughter has been begging me for the last couple years to make over her room. We moved into this house almost six years ago. Everything is painted gray and I have touched none of it. And so it's finally time to work on her room. The weather is getting cold here in Ohio and it's too cold for me to work on furniture flips outside. So now it's time to turn my attention to inside projects. And she gets first pick because the squeaky wheel gets the oil right so while her room isn't terrible it's just gray she has lived in this for almost six years and the walls are getting rough the paint's chipping there's holes and dings and nicks and as you can see it's a little messy uh, I do have two other videos talking about ways that I have tried to manage her toy supply and such and I'll put a link there so you can check those out if you want as well and it definitely has helped does it ever keep all clutter out of a kid's room? No, because they're going to play in it, live in it. And this is just the reality. This is what life in a house, lived in house looks like. So um, we're going to get this cleaned up and then we can get started on all, all the painting and stuff. But some of the things that I need to attend to is some carpet stains, some really rough spots in the closet door that were patched very roughly. And, uh, you know, I have these door stoppers that were put in to stop the doors from smashing into the walls and such, but it's just put holes in the doors and woodwork. So these are not going back on for sure. And don't judge me for this, but we have mold in the windowsill. And I know mold is very bad for you. Very bad. So I definitely have to take care of this. Once I got all the stuff out of a room, it's like, oh, this is nice and big and open. <laughs> it's like, we can live with this. But I quickly, you know, because it's time lapse, but it didn't really go that fast, obviously, pulled all the big pieces out of her room because most of them are not coming back and swept up her carpet, which may or may not have been worth it because once I sanded all the patching I did, I had to sweep again, but just to start off clean is good. So to take care of this mold, I know a lot of people usually use bleach, but I've heard from more crunchy sources that bleach does not kill, I believe it's the spores, whatever causes mold to grow again, bleach does not kill it. So it does not fully take care of it, but vinegar does. So I am using vinegar and I let that soak for a little bit and came and wiped it off. And the vinegar did not take away the stain. But I feel like the vinegar should have been on there long enough to kill the mold. So I came back with bleach to bleach the stain out of it. And I was really happy with how much cleared up. So there's a few different sections to flipping this room. One is obviously painting the walls and trim. And in order to prepare for that, I pulled off any stickers my daughter had on the wall. And then I washed all of the walls down. Being a kid's room, there was some stuff to wipe off. I was grossed out, but I saw the need for this immensely. And then I took off the closet doors because I'm going to paint the hinges, but they have white paint on them. So I need to clean them up and boil them in vinegar water. I'll do that later. I want to change out the handles and I need to patch those bad spots. So I decided I just need to take all the doors off so I can take care of them on their own. We'll look at that later. Let's focus on the room for now. I needed to patch all the holes in the woodwork with wood putty, and then I got drywall spackle. I think that's what this is called. I filled in all the holes and dings and nicks and all this stuff, and I was shocked at how many spots I had to patch in this room. Now, I am glad I wiped the walls down so that at least it was a clean surface, but once I was done sanding, I had to go and wipe the walls down again because there was dust everywhere. But it was probably just how this works. It just felt like it took a long time. But I wanted to do this right. And it has been, oh, I don't know, 10 years since I painted a room in a house I owned. Now, this was interesting. Whoever flipped this house uh, painted over what looked like wax that had spilled on the wall. Maybe one of those wax melt warmers spilled. I've done that in a rental and I had to clean that up before they could paint after we moved out. 
After picking off as much as I could, I looked online and it said to kind of get wax off of a wall to use rubbing alcohol. So I tried that. I think I also used some soapy, warm soapy water, sanded it smooth as best I could, and I felt like it didn't feel waxy. So, so we can move on. I took off all my outlet and switch covers. I did have a chunk of wood pop off of my trim that I glued on with wood glue and just stuck um, painter's tape on there to hold that in. I started with painting the trim and I noticed that down along the carpet line, it was like the paint was all chunky from, I assume, the last person that painted this. And I just thought, wow, this is terrible between the wax and the doors and now the trim and all the holes like this whoever painted this did a terrible job but by the time i got this project done i ate a little bit of humble pie a little bit of pride goes before the fall here and realized even with painting the trim it was really hard to keep the carpet from messing up the paint again and i'll show you towards the end what i did with the doors and how i even messed up with that and i just it humbled me and i realized oh it's hard to do things perfect i need to have more grace on people so as you do your own projects, have grace on people. Maybe they did their best and maybe it's not as good as you can do, but let's just move on and not be <laughs> so harsh. After I got all the trim painted, I went in and cut in the edges of the walls with my brush. I don't like to tape. I just do it by hand and do it nice and slow. And then I came in with my roller and rolled the wall. Now, I like to do it in sections. A professional painter told my uncle, who told me a long time ago, to do it in sections. You know, you do your W's and your Z's and whatever. Get all the way down, and then when you're done with that section, you start at the top and roller it down so all the paint is laying in the same direction. Is that necessary? I don't know. I always do it because that's what I was told, and it makes me feel like my paint job looks really nice. Now, my daughter did end up coming in and helping as the second coat was needed because I bought cheap paint and trying to stick with that $100. So I had to do two coats and really question my life choices at that point and decided next project, I think it's worth spending an extra 25 bucks or 30, however many cans extra. It's like $8 or more a can to get the nicer paint. But to save that time, I think is worth it. Here we are. We started out gray. And just like that, bada boom, we've got two coats of paint. The doors were pretty straightforward to fix. I just pulled out my Bondo and patched everything that needed patched with it. And it only takes like 10, 15 minutes to dry. So once it had dried enough, I came through and sanded it down. Now the doorknob on the inside of the door coming into a room, I wanted to paint because I'm making the other rest of the hardware black, uh, but I didn't want the other side of the door black because the rest of my house has silver, so I just taped it off and then spray painted, and I've seen people do this and then not realize they would have overspray, so I knew overspray would come and I was prepared to just paint over it or put some primer on it, so while that dried... I tackled the vent cover. I figured I probably could buy a new one because this one's super rusty. But again, we're trying to stick within that $100. So I needed to just sand this with some sandpaper and some steel wool and get the rust off as best I could. And then I sprayed it with a, a layer of shellac. I hoped that that would help kind of hold off some of the rust. Uh, in the end, I don't think it... I don't know. It was still, by the time I put it on, it was resting already. But at least it looks better for now. I also needed to clean up the rest of the support system for that uh, vent inside and scrubbed it with a wire brush and everything. For the hardware, because it had paint on it, I debated whether I wanted to paint it again or not and decided... Yeah, it, it needs to match. So I boiled it in vinegar water, about half and half vinegar to water. Boil it for a little while till the paint starts to come off. And then I just scrubbed it down and tried to get everything off of it that I could. I kept the pegs in the hinges because I was concerned since these doors are like, uh, let me think, 70 years old. I didn't want to get pieces mixed up and then stuff not fit back together right. So I kept everything together as I boiled it and cleaned it. And I kept the closet door hinges separate from the main door hinges because they're different sizes. 
And once those were clean and dry, I just spray painted them black, both sides. With the doors, once they're all sanded and ready, I had barely any white prime left and I didn't want to buy more because again, we're trying to stay within budget. So I was only able to prime the patches that I had you know, covered with Bondo so that at least the paint, because again, I bought cheap paint and it was be not covering very well. I definitely needed to prime, primed all those spots, and then I could roller and paint the whole door. Now, you can't see this at this point, but I'm using these plastic bags that I've been talking about. Well, on my final coat, I used a bag from a hardware store and the blue ink on the bag came off into my paint and made my paint splotchy on the doors. And at this point, I'm just like, I need to get this project done. I need to move on. And so, um, yeah, I hung the doors with fainted, faded blue spots. So be careful what plastic bag you use. Um, maybe turn it inside out. These might have accidentally been inside out. These are Kroger. The one that the ink faded on was a uh, Lowe's bag, so don't use those, maybe, or make sure it's inside out. I don't know. It was weird. That was the only time it ever happened, and I was bummed, but again, uh, pride goes before the fall. I'm thinking, oh, I can make this so much better in here. I still messed up, so I did sweep the whole room, and I borrowed a carpet cleaner to try to clean up those yucky spots in the carpet. It helped. Did it get it completely out? No but it's clean. The room smells nice. And at this point, it's time to start putting things back together. Put the outlet covers on. I did paint the grate to cover the vent the same color as the wall before it was painted white with the trim. And I thought, you know what, then you can see it. Let's hide it a little more. And then the, the screws, I painted the tip of the screw after I screwed it in because sometimes if you paint it before, when you screw it in, it chips the paint off. So I screwed it in and then painted it. We're ready to bring the bed in and hang the doors up. Oh, it's so exciting to get a project finished and done. Now, I did not <laughs> come back and paint all of the screws, but I did spray some black spray paint into a container and touch up some of those screws. And the rest I didn't do because sometimes you just leave projects not completely finished, right? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll go back and finish it. Now, funny thing, I hung the door right where it was, didn't change anything. The hinges might have got shifted as to which one went where, but the space for the hinge and the door didn't change. And when I went to shut the door, it wouldn't latch anymore. So I had to take that strike plate off so that the door would shut and latch. Uh, so I either need to chisel out a bigger hole or just leave it as is. We'll see what I do. The final touch I put on the closet doors was to change out the handles. I could have used the old ones and painted them black, but I was on BitFTA, found a box of 20 of these 18 inch drawer pulls, which I don't know that I need that many, but I won the bid for $6 and thought, I can work with this. I did end up painting them black because I decided that would match the whole room better than the gold. And I was able to put those on by just drilling a hole all the way through the door and putting the bolt in from the back. I also swung by the thrift store to pick up some more things to add some decor to her room because it was lacking. This did put me over. I'll talk at the end about the whole rundown, but I, I did go over. Um, but I tried really hard to stay within $100. So you can see, remember where we started. It was kind of a little kid girl room. And now I'll show you the final reveal, how we've updated it, made it a bigger young girl room. And uh, stick around. I'll show you the final breakdown at the end. One way I was able to keep the cost low is I used furniture I already had. This nightstand I flipped in a previous video. The bed was given to us. The cover for the bed I bought off BitFTA for just a few dollars. This desk I flipped a long time ago. I have another video for that. This bookshelf my daughter repainted herself. Also another video. I'll put them all linked together. The swing we re reused. The little vanity we reused. So all this helped keep the cost down.
$22.29 on the dresser, not including the paint. I bought all the paint at one time for the whole room, and that was $65.69. Thrift store, I put, spent $26.38. Bid FTA was cheaper than I remembered. It's total for the two things, $7.82. My mural and hardware and such cost $37.24 with a grand total of $159.42. Still pretty good. Not $100. If you take out the thrift store, we're a little closer. But all in all, I guess I cannot redo a room for $100. But under $200 is pretty stinking good.